Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the madrasa. So before the, the break, what were we looking at? We were looking at aspects of professionalism. We asked ourselves, what does professionalism look like? What are its contours, its textures, its feel? How does it show itself within the contemporary Shia madrasa? And the first point that we began to look at and we began to tease out a number of correlated uh, issues was with regards to planning learning. And we uh, mentioned that one of the aspects which um, is indicative of professionalism, professionalism found amongst the great uh, teaching faculty, wherever it finds itself, within the Shia madrasas, whether they're in uh, Europe and in Asia, in Africa, in Australasia, in the Americas, wherever the Shia madrasa actually is, the Shia madrasa is typified by professionalism. And one of the aspects of professionalism is planning learning. And we mentioned uh, schemes of work, uh, an overall detailed uh, um, roadmap or plan of what is going to be delivered and our examples over a 12 uh, week um, period. Then we moved into lesson plans and it was mentioned that the lesson plan is divided into a number of sections. It has some general data on it like the name of the, the teacher, the, um, the date, the name of the, of the subject, as well as the individual uh, topic to be addressed for that particular session or lesson. Lesson plan, session plan. Um, we mean the same thing here. So, we said another division of the, of the lesson or session plan relates to the aims and objectives that are going to be uh, met within that lesson or session. So the aims and objectives section is all about us as teachers. What do we aim to do? And the scenario which was given was of Hajj, sorry, of Hijra, they both begin with H, of Hijra and the Hijra to Abyssinia, to Africa. The, the first Hijra uh, performed by the believers uh, under the direction of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. And so we asked ourselves, well, how can these aims and objectives show themselves? So what do we intend to do? Intend to explain what Hijra actually is? Intend to explain uh, the relationship that was developed between uh, the Muslims and Negus radiallahu anhu, as well as many other aims which we could identify, and I left that to yourselves. So let's say we've got between 30 and 45 minutes, and linked to our aims are, are our resources. So we're choosing the right resources to get over our aims to our learners. We may be using a PowerPoint presentation. That may be an adequate resource. Doesn't have to be, but it might be. It might aid you as the teacher in delivering that body of knowledge. It could be flashcards. It doesn't have to be, but it might be one of those resources which you choose as the proactive, enlightened, reflective teacher within the classroom, within the madrasa itself, to enrich the learner's understanding of the hijra. It could be a video clip, 
or it could be a textual resource, uh, um, a section out of a book. Now, when we move from the aims, what we want to do, we move into the second correlated section, which are the objectives. What, the, what are the objectives of the session? And the objectives are all about the learners. What do you want as the teacher, the learners to be able to do both during the teaching and after? So it's all focused on the learners themselves. Well, obviously, it will be for the learners to understand what the Hijra is, why the Hijra took place, why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam ordered the believers or some of the believers in Makkah to perform Hijra to Africa. Why? Why Africa? Why Abyssinia? And you may, during the session, begin, begin questioning the learners so that the objectives are playing themselves out during the session or the lesson itself, as well as when the learners leave the session, they leave with a body of knowledge, not information. They leave with a body of knowledge which they can engage with uh, at any time they, they need to. So the objectives are about the learners. Moving from the aims and, obje and objectives, if I may, we come to uh, an, another section of the lesson plan. And the lesson plan you'll see on your screen uh, the one I've developed, and there are many uh, different templates with regards to lesson plans and schemes of work. You have to develop a scheme of work and a lesson plan which best suits your practice, which best suits your teaching in the blessed madrasa, wherever you are. May Allah Azza wa Jal strengthen it and strengthen all of us. So another key section relates to time. And by this, I don't mean the, the, the 30 or 40 minutes that we have give, been given. What I mean by this is the breaking down of those 30 or 40 or even 60 minutes which we have been allocated to deliver this body of knowledge. So. Let's say we have, let's be generous, and let's say we have 60 minutes, okay? We have 60 minutes. And our topic is the Hijra. Which Hijra? The first Hijra. To where? To Abyssinia. So, in the first five or 10 minutes of the 60 minutes, we will choose to explain what Hijra actually is what the word means in Hajra Yan Hajiru to move from one place to another. Okay, so we give the technical Arabic, uh, uh, um, we give the explanation of the technical Arabic word to move from one place to another. Okay, but anybody can move from one place to another. So in the first 10 minutes, we then link moving from one place to another with the order of Allah Azza wa Jal. So that Hijra, the first Hijra, was pre performed on the commands of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Okay, how long have we taken up of our 10 minutes? We could then go into explaining why the Hijra was performed from Makkah 
to Arbi Senior in Africa. Why was the Hijra performed? Well, we could highlight the existence of oppression that was meted out by the Quraysh to the early Muslims in Makkah within 10 minutes we've mentioned three clear lucid points for our learners we have 50 minutes left and in this way we use the sectioning off of time to deliver chunks of knowledge to our learners so that starting from the first minute and moving from the first all the way to the last of the 60 minutes, all moments of time, all minutes are taken up with effective transference of knowledge from ourselves in a systematic manner to our beloved learners. In those 60 minutes, you are the individual who is going to facilitate learning. So you factor in questioning, deliver a body of knowledge, stop and invite questions, invite comments, invite uh, supplementary knowledge so that the students may say, well, uh, sir or miss, uh, I thought that the hijra was to Yathrib. I never heard of the first hijra. And by inviting questions, we are able also to assess what our learners know and how the knowledge that we have tailored to meet their needs is actually impacting upon their emotional, spiritual, and academic intelligences. So that's another section with regards to the session or lesson plan. What's the other section which I want to um, discuss with you? Well, that relates to something called differentiation differentiation I have to pause before saying that word differentiation it's quite a tongue twister differentiation now what does this mean it's usually another heading within the session or less lesson plan differentiation how you as a professional teacher are going to differentiate between your learners within that one session. Let me give you an example, if I may. So, what is our topic? Our topic is the Hijra. And we have, pref we have uh, prepared a number of handouts, okay, for our learners. Let's say we've got 20 learners in the class, and so we've got 20 handouts and we hand these handouts out to the learners in the class. And we ask them to perform some kind of uh, assessment task. Now the assessment task doesn't have to be written when we are assessing learning, when we are seeing if the students are able to take that body of knowledge and turn our objectives into reality, that is, they're able to use what has been delivered and uh, reproduce it in a required manner. And reproducing it doesn't mean that they have to sit and, and, and write reams and reams. Maybe the assessment method could be that they take the handout, which a page or two pages, and they read it and they do some colouring in. Or it is a word puzzle. Or it could be a multiple choice um, quiz that is the assessment 
uh, strategy being used. So they have the handouts. Some of the, here comes the differentiation. Some of the learners are more able than others. Alhamdulillah. We see this many times in our practice that some learners are more able than others. And just as a side note, one of our um, sessions together is going to be about uh, group learning and achievement as opposed to individual learning and achievement. So back to the main point, some learners are more able than others and we recognize this and we see this every single week in our practice as teachers within the madrasa. And because they are more able, some of them, they will finish the task that we've set uh, before others. Let's say out of the 20, five of them finish the task before the remaining 15. And so there are 10 minutes to go we allocated 15 minutes out of our uh, 60 minutes for this task, this assessment task, and they're finished. Now, unfortunately, what takes place sometimes is because those gifted young boys and young girls are not constantly stimulated intellectually, spiritually, and emotionally within the classroom, then they find other ways of occupying their time. And unfortunately, their time can be taken up disturbing others. Not intentionally, they may engage in a discussion amongst themselves. And instead of whispering, their voices are heard and they are impacting upon the learning of others. Or they may get up and walk around, but nevertheless, they are not being engaged as they should be engaged. What do we do as teachers to forestall this? Well, we've set one assessment task for 20 students, but also because we are reflective, because we are professional, because we prepare our sessions uh, well in advance, we take into account those five individuals who we're sure are going to complete the task before all others, and now we give them another task to complete. It can be any task, but what does the task do? It constantly engages them in the learning process. We differentiate. We understand that there is a difference between this group of five and the group of 15. We are not pre preferring. It's all about preference. We are not preferring anybody over anybody else. Actually, we have no preferences in the classroom. All the young boys and all the young girls are our favorites. But what we do is as a sign of our professionalism within the contemporary Shia Madrasa is that we engage our learners within the classroom at all times. And one of the aspects of continued engagement of learners in the classroom is to factor in differentiation within our delivery. And this then is a heading within the lesson plan or session plan itself. How, how are we going to differentiate? What resources or which resources are we going to use to bring about this differentiation for our learners? Another section, as you'll see uh, via the slides, is the conclusion. Now, this is all about us 
I would say. And the conclusion section allows us to engage in something very special uh, for professional teachers within the madrasa. And it allows us to reflect on that session we've just delivered. Did it go to plan? Uh, did we uh, overrun on time? Did we pre prepare uh, the right resources? Or we did prepare the right resources, but did we use them in the manner in which we intended? Did we really engage the learners in that um, particular session as we had planned? What could we have done to make the learning and the teaching much more effective? So in the conclusion section, what we are doing is we are standing back from the process, understanding that when we stand back from the process, it allows us to have a wider view and it allows us to be constructively critical about our practice. We are never negative about our practice. We don't beat ourselves up uh, with regards to our teaching. Our teaching should be, it should be fun. We should have fun when we teach. We should have a smile on our faces when we teach. We should be able to enliven not only ourselves, but our learners when we teach. Our teaching is not about uh, taking the children to uh, a graveyard, okay? Our classrooms should not be graveyards. That Our classrooms should not be where the janaza takes place. Our classrooms should be where life, where joy, where happiness, where reflection, and where self-discovery take place. Because the madrasa is a representative of the wider Shia community. And the Shia community is not about doom and gloom. The Shia community is about life, it's about mercy, it's about solidarity, it's about tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal. So, we stand back from the process and we ask ourselves questions. And we ask ourselves, could we have delivered the body of knowledge which we delivered in a different manner? What other resources could we have used as reflective teachers? And how did the learners engage with the teaching and learning process? So as you'll see from the slides, the lesson plan is a detailed tool which we as teachers in the modern madrasa, in the modern Shia madrasa, uh, can use to assist our teaching. Now, very important point before we move on. Uh, if you go back to uh, where I mentioned that the uh, lesson plan or the scheme of work, sorry, the lesson plan or the session plan is divided into sections which allows minutes to be inserted. We are not robots and sometimes we may allocate five minutes or 10 or 15 minutes for a particular topic within the overall session. But we find that we're overrunning. This is natural. We, we sometimes overrun because we allow questions uh, from our learners whilst we are delivering that body of knowledge. So don't worry with regards to overrunning. The, the minute section is a rough guide if we go over by two minutes or five minutes, it's not a problem because what we do is we engage with uh, flexible and responsive teaching 
we lead the teaching. We lead the lesson plan. The lesson plan does not lead us. So yes, there are, there are these minutes that we have allocated for each individual uh, topic, but nevertheless, we are the individuals who are leading the session, therefore the lesson plan or session plan is a tool in our hands and we are the practitioner who wields the tool. So we're talking about planning and learning as aspects of professionalism within the contemporary Shia Madrasa. And Another aspect of this professionalism is the using of a range of resources. It's very important for us, if we can. I'm aware, as comments have been made with regards to our programs, uh, that some madrasas do not have a wide range of resources. So, you use effectively what you have. What you don't have, then you cannot use. But what you do have, you make sure you use it in a way which signals best practice. So using a range of resources, if we are fortunate enough to have not only a whiteboard or a blackboard, but also an overhead projector, or PowerPoints, or flashcards, or recourse to audio-visual resources. If we are fortunate to have a range of resources, then what signals planning and what is very effective for our teaching is using the resources in an effective way to transfer knowledge. On that point, we'll leave uh, this discussion for now, saying thank you very much to the production team. Thank you very much to you for watching. Remember, your comments and suggestions are vital and very, uh, um, very important to us. So please continue to email in, continue to, to ring in. Until next session, shukran jazilan, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.